my colleague Eleanor Hadley Kershaw, who's a senior research fellow who's uh, leading a lot of the field work in our sub bit of the project, was going to be presenting, but she's unfortunately not well. So I'm presenting on her behalf. So hopefully I won't make too much of a hash of the slides, but yeah, bear with me. And it's a real shame that Eleanor can't be here. OK, so just to give you a quick overview of what I'm going to try and cover, and there's going to be a lot of galloping because there's lots of ground. Um, so firstly, give you some background actually about the Changing Environment Programme, partly because that's a, a topic of our research interest in my team. Um, I'll introduce you to Renew uh, and then talk a little bit about uh, my theme within Renew and what we're doing and what our research focus is. Then I'll talk a little bit about uh, some of our early findings, not so much of the policy-oriented research, but about policy-oriented research that's going on across Renew. And that's going to be very much a, a snapshot rather than kind of an exhaustive list because we could be here for a very long time otherwise. And then uh, hopefully I will end up with some sort of conclusions. OK, so <clears throat> to start off with, um, yes, bear with me. So background to, um, to our project and to changing the environment. Um, so particularly uh, in Renew, there's, there's a background issue that um, across uh, working across disciplines and working beyond academia and collaborating across these uh, domains is a really well established um, challenge and imperative for, for environmental sciences in general. Um, in the UK, the research councils have uh, for a long time made significant investments into doing interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary programs, uh, addressing things like biodiversity loss, but other environmental issues. Um, and this is uh, particularly uh, since the early 2000s. So, for example, the Rural Economy and Land Use Program, uh, which actually two of my postdocs were funded under. So there's a continuity there. Um, and, but it's not the only one. There's been a whole series of these in the early 21st century. And going back further into the history of environmental sciences, we have programs like Man in the Biosphere, and even the foundation of the Natural Environment Research Council itself uh, is, is basically addressing this challenge. So these challenges are not new. Um, and I think that's a really important thing for all of us to understand. OK. So uh, the Changing in the Environment programme in particular um, is aiming to sort of build on this agenda um, to creating integrated solutions to environmental problems. Um, so as has already been flagged, there are four main Changing the Environment um, projects and we'll hear from all of them today, which is fabulous. Um, now, f again, uh, in terms of our own research interest, we're interested in science policy and the interaction of science and policy. And so there's some really interesting things going on here in terms of the shifting priorities, uh, firstly around UKRI and their interest in particularly applied research uh, in recent years. And also in terms of thinking about any NERC itself and how environmental science gets defined. Um, particularly the role of human in environmental science. And something we're very, very interested in is whether this is kind of an experimental mode or whether this is part of a broader sea change uh, around kind of um, environmental science funding and activity. OK, so Renew itself. Um, so re deep breath. Renewing biodiversity through a people in nature approach. So this is basically our aim. It's not a small aim, uh, the renewal of biodiversity, but particularly thinking about how people are actually at the heart of these problems and, and how we then go about renewing biodiversity via thinking about people. Um, so again, this is quite a shift in terms of, of what environmental science is or might be. Um, to explain kind of the shape of the Renew program, uh, so Renew itself is is very very large pro project project program, who knows. Um, so at Exeter we have uh, four core themes. Um, so firstly, one which is about individuals and their own experiences of biodiversity. Uh, a second one which is about communities. A third one which is about land and land managers and farming. 
And then a fourth theme, which is around uh, business and finance and decision makers in those sectors. Um, then we have three cross-cutting themes. And um, you can see how this gets complicated even for those of us involved in the project. Uh, so firstly, one uh, which is essentially around uh, data and data science in the environment. Uh, secondly, uh, the X cases team who uh, mentioned themselves a couple of times um, and I'll come on to a bit more. Um, and thirdly, my own uh, theme. Um, so to say each of them, um, each of those themes have their own dedicated partners, but it means that collectively we have an awful lot of partners. And, and indeed, kind of one thing that I think we need to be thinking about more is whether this framing as partners or stakeholders has something of a flattening effect that actually we have some very very different kind of partners with different ways of working different modes of knowledge production and different relationships into different bits of the project um, so that's that's something to think about underlying the idea of renew itself is very much in kind of that co-creation mode of thinking about um, <coughs> science policy relationships um, and that's kind of underlies the whole program. It underlines the design of the particular themes. Um, and also thinking about uh, interdisciplinarity and how you foster that. There's a whole debate within the literature about whether that can be created from the top down versus the bottom up. And very much the idea of what we're doing here is to try and do a bit of both. Um, but what that also means that each individual theme is all already uh, developing and tinkering with their own particular styles of collaboration, which uh, are actually really quite radically different across the project. Um, so it means this idea of the science policy interface is, is kind of, for Renew, I'm not sure whether that model quite works because a lot of our interactions uh, with partners um, are kind of embedded into the, the fabric of the research. Okay, and just to say uh, one of the things that we do because we're so big and complicated is so we have um, an annual event called a biodiversity parliament. So this is from the first one last November and um, in shot you can see several of the co-eyes and several of the partners um, and it's really really important to have this space where we bring everyone together. Um, I think we're in the process of there's a breakout group is, is reenacting their proposal for um, how to, um, how to uh, uh, reform uh, food systems uh, via um, a bit of physical comedy, I think is what was going on there. Um, but it's really important to have this space. And so that will be happening annually. Um, so the next one will be in November. Um, okay. Uh, so to explain about our theme, so we have the um, does not trip off the tongue name of X3, uh, but what we're doing is, so we are collaboration in practice. So what we are actually interested in is primarily we are interested in interdisciplinary uh, and also I should say transdisciplinary working practices. So how does collaboration actually happen on the ground? Um, and when I, the reason why I'm saying interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary is because when we talk about transdisciplinarity, that automatically integrates collaboration with communities, with third sector, um, and, and with policy. So I think that's where kind of the policy integration is coming in from our point of view. Um, <clears throat> where am I at? Um, so that's broadly what we're up to. And in terms of what we're actually trying to do, so we're firstly evaluating, uh, we're looking backwards as well as looking uh, into what's happening in the programme itself. So uh, our key partner is uh, the British Library and we work with the National Life Stories team. So they are taking oral histories of past collaborative practices so we can draw on that that experiential learning in the past rather than it disappearing as the project ends. Um, <clears throat> but what we're also doing is that we're investigating collaboration within the Renew programme itself. So we're taking a reflexive kind of research on research approach to the wider project. Um, <clears throat> so that's what we're up to. 
Um, just to very briefly give you an overview of our methodology, even our project is uh, methodologically complicated. And as I say, bringing in oral histories, uh, individual interviewing, uh, ethnographic work, and a big challenge is how you do ethnographic work when much of the project is still operating online and how we do uh, ethnographies of science in this kind of post-pandemic environment. Uh, and finally, a diary study, which um, is, is coming, uh, but is also proving quite challenging. And ultimately, we're working towards um, doing the research on research, but also developing practice guidance. I'll talk about that in a bit. And ultimately creating uh, an archive of it, environmental collaboration where we can deposit this learning from the past and from what, what we're doing now so that it's there for that handover for future projects. And that's really, really critical. Okay, how am I doing on time? All right? Good. Good. Okay, so to think more in more granularity about kind of policy oriented research in Renew. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is, is talk, as I say, sort of our observations uh, as a research team, researching Renew as what we're, what we're seeing happening. Um, so kind of the very first thing to say, and actually I should have said it when I introduced the project, is that um, the project itself is co-led by the National Trust. So in terms of the, we have co-investigators in the senior leadership team and in some of the themes who are National Trust researchers. And so that in and of itself is, is very unusual. And it kind of embeds that collaborative approach sort of right at the very heart of what we're doing. Where am I going? Okay. Um, so also it means that each theme has its own kind of dedicated partners, and I mentioned that. And so uh, across the themes, what we have is quite close work with partner organisations, and a lot of the activity uh, is also focusing on kind of co-designing and co-developing uh, decision-making tools and dashboards and things like that uh, across the across the project. So there's sort of, again, this very dense collaboration. Um, another thing to flag is that many members of the re research team itself have these very, very varied professional backgrounds. Um, so people who have spent time in research across working across multiple disciplines, people who spent time in policy or embedded practice and are now come into the project. So we're, we're bringing all these personal experiences together into this work. Um, so just to very flag very briefly, uh, so we've got here, uh, so Davron is a PhD student uh, with Renew, who's, who's come to Renew from Natural England. And we also have the X cases postdoc team. So there's Michelle, Dave, and where's Claire? Don't know, okay, any, oh no. Oh. Like anyway, flies. we are, we are, yes, so Re Renew is, is dropping white flies. But anyway, the point being that, that we have people in the room also who, are, ha again, have these really varied backgrounds, and that's a real, real strength and richness to the project. Um, and so when we could do the Q&A, if you want to ask questions uh, around those, those areas, then please do. Um, <clears throat> a few more minutes, okay, I'll start speeding up. Um, so I've mentioned the X cases, and so they are kind of like the agile sprints, but more so. Um, and so that in itself is creating lots and lots of challenges. Okay, so just a very, very quick kind of example of what I'm talking about in terms of this integrated work. So the thing two, which is focused on communities, uh, the kinds of things that they're getting up to. So there is a stream of work where they are collaborating with Natural England, but also with a partnership group of local authorities. Um, and again, developing a, a tool for thinking about uh, nature and sustainability at that kind of local government decision-making level. Um, so they have regular online in-person meetings with those partners. They're also um, uh, doing local uh, projects. Um, and another thing to think about, and sorry, I'm just speeding slightly. 
but essentially, so they're co-developing this tool. Um, but a bigger part of the context uh, with Renew is that um, bigger structural support, such as uh, the strategic partnerships that we have with National Trust and with Natural England, is also really, really helping support this kind of on-the-ground activity. Uh, another example of the working communities is, so we, there was just mention of the absence of deep humanities. So in Renew, we have uh, a whole um, sub part of the, of the communities theme who are poets. Uh, our own uh, project, we've got a thread of work which is about creativity and creative practice. And we've already found that this has been immensely important in terms of sort of enriching and particularly creating spaces for reflection about what we're doing. Um, so again, thinking about, so, so uh, one of our other PhD students, Caleb Parkin, who is eff effectively our poet in residence, uh, and he was the Bristol City poet beforehand. And so again, it's kind of, it's not just about them standing there going, making some nice poetry, it's very much about that then encouraging that and that mode of, of interacting and thinking right the way across the project, including for many of us who've never really worked in these kind of modes before. Um, OK, very quickly, uh, in the collaboration theme, talking about the, again, spaces for reflection. So we've been doing uh, workshops currently within the project, but we, we do are planning on doing further ones with our partners. Um, Partly about fostering connection across the project because we're very geographically distributed and as I mentioned we work online a lot. Um, but also thinking about what Renew could be and our hopes for, for collaborating and how we work together. Um, and what we're also finding is that these workshops have been very good at surfacing cold spots. So places where actually there are absences. So geographical spaces that are not being thought about. Um, uh, issues that, that are kind of underlying tensions that are not being talked about. And so these kinds of creative workshops are really helping. Okay, um, bear with me. What we're also doing, sorry, I've just totally lost track of where I am in my talk, um, is that we're creating a guide for collaborative practice, which I'm not going to go into the details of, other than that it's a living resource. So we have version one, which has been um, worked with the team. We've also done a session where we were getting feedback from the partners, um, which was quite a chastening experience, actually. Uh, even though we, we write a lot about science communication, we still immediately got the feedback of too many words. Um, <clears throat> But it's very much about developing this as iteratively through the project and ultimately being something that is public facing that again becomes a legacy that can be picked up and used by other organisations and projects into the future. OK, um, so I won't cover the content of the practice guide, but we are very um, willing to share that and, and definitely get feedback because it's still at this very early stage. But as you can see, a lot of it is about uh, the things you don't normally think about when you're doing research. So things like mutual care, thinking about day-to-day -day habits, uh, taking time and space. And again, that's a particular issue that's kind of been surfacing and resurfacing uh, yesterday and today. So these are kind of some of our preliminary recommendations because we're already talking back to Renew itself in terms of things, things that are happening but need to happen more, so particularly things around meeting regularly. Uh, regular meetings are happening, particularly online, but also building in more times uh, to meet in person, uh, to do away days and creative things, going on walks. Again, these kinds of things are happening and they're really, really helping pull things together. Um, building in time to think about those kind of really tacit ways of working and how they're very different because you won't really know about them until you fall over them. And so surfacing those, bringing out those elephants in the room is really important. Um, finally, something else we're also recommending and it sounds like an obvious thing, but uh, really appreciating uh, the work of our professional services colleagues who basically run the engine of Renew and um, 
appreciating that work, drawing on their expertise is a really important thing that, that often particularly universities are very bad at doing, uh, academics can be very bad at doing. Um, and then also thinking about tailored modes of training, uh, again, particularly for skills like facilitation. Okay, so last slide, getting there. Um, near last. Um, and these are kind of some of our early things we've learned. So particularly one of our big challenges. Uh, so firstly, we have kind of multiple modes of interdisciplinarity. There are some people who operate very much in a sort of liminal, undisciplined kind of space. Others who very much think about themselves as, as uh, disciplinary diplomats. So they're very rooted in one space, but they like to bounce ideas off of another. Um, we have big challenges around scale. So geographical scale, the sheer scale of the organisation of the project, um, the, sh the, the scale of our aims um, and scale over time. And, and what we're finding is that nesting in smaller spaces and smaller scales within the big things is a really, really important mechanism for, for making it all work. Again, hanging out and hanging out online and in person that we have on online working is kind of our default and it's actually making a lot of our work possible, uh, but it's also creating challenges of its own. Uh, particularly, it means that you have to really pay attention to those social and emotional aspects of collaboration that otherwise you might just take for granted. Um, and so continuing this challenge of how we kind of build those top down structures and keep developing them within Renew so that that bottom up growth, which is happening at really exciting ways, keeps happening and doesn't kind of start to wither. OK, so here's our conclusions. And this really is the last slide. Um, <laughs> so firstly, that the policy and practice actors are kind of embedded in Renew in all sorts of really complicated ways. Um, and so it means that kind of, and we say research policy rather than science policy because of the breadth of disciplines we have, um, are, tend to be collaborative and not just circular, but kind of wandering all over the place. So this, the, the linear impact model is, is kind of even more nonsensical in the context of our project. Um, collaboration is really being fostered by really taking care and paying attention to these practices um, and making time and space for creativity as, as a way of kind of stepping back and connecting with each other. But in the long term, thinking about capacity building, um, is really helping and we need to pay attention and this is the downside of kind of the, the entanglement is that we spend so much time building relationships with each other within the project that then looking outside is, is very very difficult and that's the next thing that we need to kind of pay much more attention to is, is how we then start to engage outside of the project and build it forwards and there I am stopping. Brilliant.